February is American Heart Month, and unfortunately, most of us know someone who has had heart disease or stroke. In addition to these conditions being leading causes of disability, preventing people from working and enjoying family activities, cardiovascular disease is also the leading cause of death in the United States. Here to talk about how you can keep your heart healthy is Dr. Mark Roche with Sacred Heart Cardiology, a division of Sacred Heart Medical Group. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, I know we should probably all be concerned about keeping our heart healthy, but what age do you find that people really start paying attention to this or need to? Well, obviously, the earlier that you do it, um, the better. And actually, you know, people start to lay down the foundation for heart disease in 20s and 30s, you know, with fast food and all the stuff that we as Americans don't do right. Um, so certainly by the time you graduate from your 20s, you should at least know what your cholesterol is and kind of um, talk about that with your doctor and if there's anything that you can do about it. So certainly younger, um, and as I say, at least kind of know what your cholesterol is before you graduate into your 30s. Mm -hmm. um, are there any particular groups that are more susceptible to heart disease? And if so, tell us about that. Sure. Uh, so obviously, you don't want to smoke. Um, and unfortunately, there are too many people in the pan here that smoke. Uh, diabetes is a big, um, is a big uh, uh, problem. Um, if you have high blood pressure or hypertension. And then I tell my patients that unfortunately we can change lots of things, but we can't change our genes. So family history is a big thing for me. Do you find that some people aren't as familiar with the family history as maybe they should be? Sure. Um, you know, they, uh, they know that their, their, their parents may have had um, um, some heart disease. Uh, you know, I find that people can be adopted and they don't know. But yeah, uh, paying attention to the family history is a big uh, Mm -hmm. is a big factor. What about medication? What kind of medications out there that could possibly regulate or sure. stabilize this to some degree? So if your um, cholesterol is high or if you have risk factors for heart disease, uh, the best class of medicines are called statins, mm -hmm. the Lipitors, the Crestors. Um, they are very effective. Um, they're uh, overall very safe and they really reduce your risk of having um, heart disease and heart attacks. So if you have high cholesterol, and especially if you have risk factors, and especially diabetes, family history, then uh, you can talk to your doctor about getting on some of those medications. Do those typically have any side effects or complications? Sure, they can. Um, the, the, the real true complications are actually very few and far between. Um, your doctor will monitor your liver, um, which is the big thing. The biggest uh, thing that people experience is they can get some muscle pains and muscle cramps, and there are ways to deal with that and changing the dose or changing the medications. Most patients tolerate these very well. Okay. Well, what about exercise? You know, we think of exercise increasing the heart rate, but is that something that people should still be doing? And if so, does medication interfere with that? How does the exercise sure. component fit in? Exercise is very important for a number of um, reasons. Uh, one, it helps strengthen the heart. Uh, if people do have heart disease and heart blockage, it can help you to repair the heart and to grow new blood vessels uh, sometimes. And also, exercise raises your good, your good cholesterol or your HDL, which is protective of people uh, with regards to heart disease. Okay. Well, a lot of times when we're talking about heart disease, we you know, end up talking about heart attacks. Um, what are some of the symptoms and what should someone do if they feel like sure. they're having a heart attack? So obviously the classic uh, symptoms is a heaviness or a pressure across your chest. People can describe an elephant sitting on their chest, and that's sort of the classic uh, textbook. But unfortunately, um, people can often present with what we call atypical, uh, especially women. So even things like arm discomfort, uh, back discomfort, some people can get jaw discomfort, and people have actually gone to dentists thinking that they're having a tooth problem. So anything that's out of the ordinary, um, you know, that's related to sort of the upper chest, the, uh, the abdomen, the upper um, stomach, a burning sensation. Those are all things that, uh, that I've seen present uh, as a heart attack. Okay. And a lot of times we hear that minutes matter, especially in talking about strokes as well. Sure. Tell us about why that's so important. So the quicker, so what a heart attack is, it's when the artery becomes totally blocked. Uh, you get a blood clot, it stops the blood flow down the artery and the heart muscle beyond that blockage gets um, uh, damaged, uh, that can be reversed if you can open up the blockage in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. um, in this country, we talk about um, once a patient comes to the emergency room to try to get that artery open within 90 minutes. And so the quicker uh, people can get to the hospital and get therapy, um, then the more chance that you can save uh, more heart muscle. So yes. 
uh, time is definitely of the essence. Well, I know, um, you know, as a professional, you not only diagnose things, but you fix problems, too. Um, tell us a little bit about new technologies or new sure. ways that y'all actually uh, unblock things and help people. Yeah, I actually tell people that I'm a plumber. I, uh, I open up um, uh, blockages. And uh, the way that we open up most heart attacks is with stents um, and balloons. Uh, the stent is a piece of metal. It's like a metal tube, if you will, the uh, piece of screen door into a tube that, that can actually go up and uh, you can put it in the um, heart artery and it opens up the blockage and keeps it open. Um, and we have better stents now, we have better medicines, and uh, we at Sacred Heart do the predominant of these uh, procedures through the wrist. Most mm -hmm. people will get into the uh, leg or the groin, but we try to do everybody from the wrist um, in the artery there. It's safer. Uh, um, it actually um, has a benefit with regards to whether or not you make it uh, actually mm -hmm. through the uh, first 30 days. So that's probably one of the uh, most exciting developments is really trying to do these procedures in a safer way. And again, with the new um, stents and with the new medicines that we now have at our disposal. That's interesting. Well, um, after going through that, do most patients resume pretty close to what they were normally doing? Sure. You know, and, and it really depends on, on how big the heart attack is and how much heart damage you suffer. Um, and obviously, the, the less heart damage uh, and the quicker that you get therapy, the better off people are. And I have people uh, that I've treated who um, have had a heart attack and, you know, we take care of them. And then a month later, they're playing tennis or, you know, doing all that stuff. And, and uh, they've, they've had where their heart has, um, if not recovered completely, uh, pretty close to it. Mm -hmm. What is the number one question that people ask you when they're concerned about, you know, their heart and kind of afraid, I guess, would be a good term? Um, what, what do they ask you? Sure. Um, I think the biggest thing is how to prevent another heart attack. So so people that come to me and have a heart attack, um, it, it's, as you can imagine, quite a motivating um, thing for them. And so we talk about all the things that we've talked about, um, particularly staying on the medicines that your doctor prescribes. Making sure that bad, that LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, if you've had a heart attack, you want that really low, under 70. And that's uh, typically uh, done with medication and diet and exercise. And again, just have people kind of change the things that they were doing. Um, if they're smoking, that's a big, big, big thing. Uh, making sure people exercise. If they're overweight, losing weight, um, you know, cutting out all the, the fast foods and the, you know, um, a lot of the carbohydrates and all that stuff. But just sort of changing um, how they're living. Well, great information, and thanks right. for being here. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. We'll be right back with more Coming of Age and how you can be part of a group of local seniors who share an interest in travel and fellowship.